a few days from now, you have to excise your options for MSET counseling and decide on the web options. And the big question that every parent and student faces is, should I go for CSE or the core branches? Now, what do I mean by CSE and what do I mean by core branches? CSE means not just computer science and engineering. It also means CSIT, that is the information technology branch as it is called. Then the new variants of CSE, they are also called branches now, AIML, for example, artificial intelligence and machine learning, data science, cyber security, IoT, etc. In fact, there is not much of difference among any of these branches. All branches are alike. Only for commercial considerations uh, at the state level, especially in among the private colleges, you have these branches. So there's absolutely no difference. And if you want to know what, what could be the differences, there is a previous video that we have made on this and I will include that in the description box here. CSE and CSE variants. Now, what about the core branches? When I talk about core branches, I'm talking about ECE, that is Electronics and Communication Engineering, Triple E, that is Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Mechanical, Civil, etc., etc. So, the big question is, should you go for CSE or should you go for core branch? So, always I've been saying over the years, and I'm a firm believer of the fact that if you have a passion for a particular branch, you will do well in life, whatever be the branch that you take. And I have several students who have gone on and done great things because of their passion. Now, how does this passion pay out? Let's say, for example, you take ECE out of passion. You like electronics and communication. You want to work in the exciting area of hardware and communication technology. So, what will you do? Even if there is no placement, say, in your campus for core branches, you will go for higher studies or uh, you will go for Indian engineering services, you will uh, prepare for GATE, go for MTech at the IITs and post that again, you will go for, you will have a number of opportunities or you will go abroad, do your MS in the core branch that you are, that you have passion for and then settle in that core branch. That is provided you know what your passion is. A number of students today do not know what their passion is or don't, don't have a passion. Then second thing is, at least you should have a clarity in terms of what you want to do in life after BTEC. Like for example, there is a student who came and told me the other day that he wants to do an MBA. He is very clear, he wants to do an MBA. In which case, the branch doesn't matter. If you want to do an MBA, take the best college possible. Take, for example, take OU um, uh, or JNTU or Chaitanya Bharati or whatever at the state level, at your state level, whatever is the best college, go ahead and take any branch that you want. Because when you go to a good college, you will have a good branding. Second is you'll have a great peer group. That means your fellow students will be good. So you will. You will learn a lot from them. You will know how to be competitive because when you have good peer group, the group will be very, very competitive. You will be on the edge all the time. And if you are in a city, then obviously you will have greater exposure. You will have chances for coaching, etc., etc. Similarly, civil services, I would give the same advice. And uh, say you want to get a government job. Like there are some parents who want to go for government job. They do not believe in private sector. So they want their wants to get into a government job. So you want to get into a government job, then obviously you should be taking something like electrical or civil, etc., etc. So if you know what you want to do your uh, what, what you want to do after your BTEC, then you can choose your branch accordingly. Then you can ask me, sir, I do not I do not have a passion for anything. I do not know what I want to do after BTEC. And I would say, close your eyes and join the branch which is in demand at that particular point of time. And now the branch most in demand is in computer science. But let me add uh, one word of caution here. Whatever I am talking about in this particular video, this branch selection is for only state level colleges. That is why 
in big bold letters, I have written M set counseling. Whatever analysis that I am going to give here is only for state level colleges. This does not apply to IITs, NITs, FITs, because there are other dynamics which come into play the branding, there are other advantages that you get by getting into those kind of institutions. So, the analysis that I am going to make here does not apply to IITs, NITs, FITs. Whatever I say here applies only to state level colleges. So, uh, please keep that in mind. Now, let us come to uh, this particular selection uh, dilemma that you face CSC versus core at the state level. The uh, why I advised if you do not have passion or you do not know what you want to do after BTEC, I said you take the branch which is in demand. Why I said that is at the state level, why at the state level, even in the IITs and NITs, there are not that many good core branch placements. Say for example, if you take an electrical, there is no electronics at uh, most of the IITs. Say if you take electrical, what are the companies which will come to you for hardware and communication engineering? There are just a handful of them. I can think of Samsung Electronics. I can think of Intel. I can think of Qualcomm. I can think of Xilinx. Many. Perhaps I can, uh, if I spend a little time, I can maybe identify or maybe of four or five other companies. But how many do they take? Maybe two, three Texas instruments. Two, three, four, five. That's it. They are not going to come like the IT companies to each campus and take a truckload of students. In fact, more than a truckload of students nowadays. In fact, I would say the service companies like TCS, Infosys, Wipro, etc., etc., come and take a train load of students from each of the campuses. So even at the IITs and NITs, there are not that many core sector placements. So, if you are looking at placements primarily after BTEC, then you are coming out of a state level college. Unless you have a passion to do well in that particular branch, getting a placement in those core sectors is going to be difficult. Of course, if you have passion, it's, it's different. I have, a, I have a student, I had a student actually, who wanted to get into the automobile sector. So, he, he chose a mechanical in a very ordinary college in Hyderabad. Then he, because of sheer, out of sheer passion, he got into Ford in, uh, uh, in, in, in Chennai. Uh, of course, Ford no longer exists in India now, it's shut his operations. But then at that point of time, Ford was there and he got into Ford. And uh, he worked there for a couple of years. Then he did his MS uh, in US in automobile engineering and uh, got into Ford USA and is le leading his American uh, dream in US. So th that is because why did the boy, why did the student succeed? Because he had that passion. So coming back to my original point that because the placements are not that many, it makes sense. If you are looking at placements immediately after your BTEC to get into a branch which is in demand. So, let us look at CSC. Now, CSC, when I say CSC, as I told you already, I'm, look, I'm saying I'm talking about CSC and all the allied branches. Now, what are the things that are going for CSC? A, in terms of placements. We all know that uh, any of the engineering colleges, whether it is the IITs or the state level colleges, uh, majority of the jobs are offered by IT companies. And in IT companies, again, we have two kinds of IT companies broadly. One is the service companies, like for example, TCS, Infosys, Wipro, HCL, uh, Tech Mahindra, Cognizant, etc., etc., etc. And then the product companies. What are the product companies? Microsoft, Facebook, Google, Salesforce, etc., etc. Now, the Service companies, the requirements are huge, so they take in large numbers, but the salary package is at a low level, maybe around 4 lakhs. And by the time you graduate 4 years down the line, it may go up to 5 or 5.5 or even 6 lakhs. In the product companies, the package is much higher and whatever 
you see in newspapers about students getting that uh, 20, 30, 40, and in the case 40 lakhs, or in the case of IIT is 1 crore plus, so all in product come. So earlier, it was difficult for a state level college student to get into uh, product companies, but now because of the demand and also because the placement is more democratized now, uh, even students from local colleges are able to get into product companies, whether it is Amazon, whether it is Microsoft, Adobe, etc., etc. And how to prepare for that or kind for, for a product job? I made a special video on that, top 10 tips for CSE students, and I'll give a link to that video in the description box here. So if you want to get into CSE, if you want to get into a product level company, product company uh, like Microsoft, Adobe, et cetera, et cetera, and you are from a local branch, a local college, uh, how do you prepare for that kind of a job right now, right from the first year? What are the things that you should be doing? I've included in that video. So if you're interested, you can watch that video. So first thing going for CSE is placements. Then second thing is in terms of the packages, which I already mentioned, and the growth. Because uh, year on year, the growth in the IT sector is also very high because of the overall industry growth. Because as far as I can see, technology can never get out of it. All of us are uh, seeing that in our everyday life. So if you just switch on your mobile, Everything that you use on the mobile has got a basically a technology background and technology is going to be more and more pervasive in our everyday lives. Every company would, re uh, would require information technology in some way or the other to stay competitive and uh, because we are the software powerhouse of the world, most of the jobs will come to India because of uh, the advantages that uh, we have uh, as a nation. Uh, I don't want to get into that. That is a subject for another video. So the, the jobs will continue to be there. But then there will be a question. Uh, some parents ask me, what about uh, a recession? Because uh, uh, in early 2000, there was this dot com bust. In 2008, uh, the financial industry uh, went through uh, a, a tailspin and IT sector got affected. And even now, act actually, as we are speaking this year, there is a talk of recession in the US. So yes, of course, there is going to be a, uh, uh, there are going to be these kind of problems and challenges, but these are going to be short-lived. And uh, after the dot-com bust, after the after that particular year, again the uh, industry bounced back. After 2008 financial crisis, again the industry bounced back. And even if there is a recession this year, this is going to be short-lived. We are talking about long-term trends, and we are talking about placements for your child four years from now. We are not talking about current-day scenario. Four years down the line, what is going to happen? So over the long term, if you see, technology is never going to go out of fashion. There will be those jobs that will be available, uh, especially for Indians. So there is not going to be a disadvantage. Then the other thing that is going for uh, the IT jobs is, the IT jobs are in a pure meritocracy. So if you have merit, you will get the job. I can't say the same of other, uh, other fields. So that is another positive as far as the IT sector is uh, concerned. Then there is a the glamour associated with working in an AC and working on technology related problems. And most importantly for we Indians and specifically Telugu speaking Indians is the chance to go abroad to work on projects. Several of the IT sector folks uh, get a chance very early in their career to go abroad and work on projects. So that is an added uh, advantage and a bonus. So for all of these things, one can look at the CSE branch a little seriously. So to summarize, uh, I would say that if you have a passion for a particular branch, go ahead. Just don't join the herd. Because if you have passion, you will always do well. And over the long term, in fact, you will be better placed than a student who gets into uh, CSE just because he's following the herd. That is number one. Number two, if you know what you want to do after your BTEC, then accordingly make your choice. If you don't fall into either of these two categories, then choose the branch in demand and uh, that happens to be CSE right now and that will be there, I, I think, for the foreseeable future. Then just close your eyes, select the best college and get into any of the CSE branches. Let me tell you, there's not much of difference among the CSE branches 
whether it is plain CSE, whether it is IT, whether it is CSE AI ML, whether it is CSE data science, whether it is CSE IoT, cyber security, at the undergraduate, uh, undergraduate level, there's not much of difference among all of these things. Um, in fact, what happens is that uh, uh, the, the uh, core courses are the same in all the branches. The electives in CSC will become compulsory courses in the respective variants of CSE. Other than that, there's not going to be much difference. The placements will be the same. Uh, it is just that out of commercial compulsions, uh, the, the local colleges have invented new branches, so to say, so that, you know, uh, they will be able, because everybody is demanding a CSE. There is only that many CSE students that they can take as, as per ACT guidelines to circumvent that rule. They have these new branches. So via these new branches, they take more students for CSE. That is the only difference. So don't get too very uh, excised about CSE versus CSE AIML because I get a lot of questions about all these things. In the chosen college, if you're not getting CSE, take the next uh, CSE variant there. Okay. If you still have questions, uh, put those questions in our comment section. and Our team will come back to you with answers as soon as possible. All the best for your counseling.